RFP for transportation. All right. Um, we are currently in the last year of our contract for regular bus service for pupils within the Kentucky Regional School District. Under Mass General Law, we are required to go to bid for this particular service. I had prior sent a uh, draft copy to the subcommittee for the packet that will be going out to bid. The, uh, it'll, I'll probably see the earliest I can get the ad in the paper. It'll probably be early next week. Um, I've received comments back from you, incorporated them into the RFP. Um, I'm assuming then everybody's okay with me to put it on the street, yep. follow the mm -hmm. rules, follow the law? Yep. Okay. We're going to have a deadline for it? Uh, the deadline for this one particular one will be at 10.30 a.m. on January 12, 2017 will be the bids will be open. Obviously, you want to get it in the paper and in the, in the uh, central register a couple weeks notice before that. Mm -hmm. So I would like to get this in the paper as soon as possible. So it will be in the Newburyport Daily News, as most of our ads are, and it will be in the central register at the next available date. I'll coordinate the two of them and make sure they hit on the same time. Great. Okay. No other further discussion. We'll move on to the fiscal year 16 draft audit. Okay, the fiscal 16 year draft audit is now complete. I actually, we actually signed the management letter and sent it back. The audit will be will present to the full committee when it comes back in its total form. Um, there is a management letter with no comment, but an update telling us that starting in next year, we're gonna have, they want someone to do a documentation of internal controls. That's usually one of those things I wait for a bigger town to do and then kind of use up, work off of there what they did because we don't have the staff to kind of document all that, but bigger cities will. And it's all the same control systems. Uh, the reports on federal award programs had one comment, which has already been cleaned up. It basically said, although we reported all the funds for all the grants properly in total, there were some adjustments made within them, like salaries may have been off by like a thousand bucks and more in supplies. It falls within the range, but they'd rather it just equal the accounting ledger. So it's just a comment. It's not a, even a federal, not a federal, no, we don't lose any money. And other than that, everything else looks fine. There was nothing of any concern. That's good. Do you have any, are there any questions? No? Good. Uh, we'll move on to the school building committee update, RE OPM. The School Building Committee Subcommittee for OPM Management Procurement. I think I'm doing that right. <laughs> um, they had a meeting. Uh, it was last Tuesday. Basically, a week ago today. Yep. And they went through all the homework assignments and things. And we came up with a request for services under the MSBA proposal in an ad and attachments, and I was sent back to put it into a packet. Um, I did run that packet by the MSBA, who said it certainly met their standards and they'll be fine with it once they get it voted by the full committee to go forward. Actually, they actually didn't want me to have much of any type of break or the committee type of break, and they actually suggested moving the time frames up about three weeks that I had originally estimated for opening the packets and setting contracts and selecting. So hopefully at the meeting on December 13th of the full committee, the OPM committee will vote within that body to move this packet forward. I'm still waiting. They've all had it now. They're looking at it. I haven't seen any comments yet, but if they do, we can address them fairly quickly before that so that the full building committee can then vote it out that same night and we'll get it to the MSBA by Thursday the 15th, which will get us into their OPM protocol by their next meeting in January. So that's what the goal is, that's what they'd like to see us do, and hopefully we'll be able to push forward with that. I, like I said, I haven't seen any comments yet. The full packet will look something like this. It's basically nothing more than the request for services, a copy of the ad that'll go in the paper, a copy of the contract they'll be required to sign. If you want to work with the MSBA, this is your contract. There's, we set some attachment. We've attached a copy of the original statement of uh, interest that we put in. There's a copy of 
the existing conditions report we did for the high school to help them understand what they're getting themselves into and a couple certification forms that I require to make sure that you're in good standing with a bunch of different state agencies before we give you any money. So that hopefully that'll all work out and you should be able to head that out the door. Do you have anything else to add? Yeah, Greg, could you just talk a little bit about <coughs> how there are 11 different um, areas that the MSBA recommends and sure. they all have different weights and some of the work of the committee is to come up with a rubric for decision making mm -hmm. so it's standard and defensible. Sure. Obviously, as the procurement officer, I want to make sure that this is about as clean as it can be. Um, during prior meetings, we've talked to them about having contact with potential vendors and things like that, how we can't be doing those things. Basically, as part of the MSBA process for OPM selection, they have a couple things you have to have. In other words, you have to have certain qualified people. They, before you can even be reviewed, you have to meet that standard. After that, they have 11 recommended areas for review and they'll let you either add or detract from them. The committee decided that the 11 the MSBA proposed obviously would seem to fit everybody's needs because it's something they're used to. But what they allow you to do after that is to tweak it a little bit for yourselves. So the committee discussed it and determined certain areas were worth a lot more points, more, meant more to us than other things did. But if you total the 11 areas up, they'll equal 100 points. And each person will get a review packet and individually review them on their own because it's just easier. Once you have a set idea of how you, what you look for, your consistent will be scoring. That'll be done kind of in a vacuum. Each person will have it at home by themselves over, over a week period to review them. They'll turn their rating sheets into me without seeing anybody else's rating sheets. I will tabulate them and they'll be worth 80% of the score in the end to selection. But up until that point, the top three to five, depending on how many you get, will be selected for an interview. They'll come in and give you a presentation, an interview, and that'll be worth 20% of the score. And again, there'll be a set of standard questions that they ask. Everybody gets asked the same questions in front of the same people on the same night. So everybody can determine what, and that'll be worth 20% of the score. Once that process goes forward, we determine with a person that rises to the top in the committee's view, you'll negotiate a fee with them. That's basically how engineering works with the MSBA. It's how it works in a lot of mass general law when you're doing design of engineering services. And if you can't come up with a fee, a negotiated fee, that they're willing to sign that contract to provide those services for that money. After seeing our site, knowing where ponds are, streams are, rivers are, knowing that they're going to do soil tests. We all know the soil here was very challenging when we did the project for the athletic fields. Once they know all those things, They'll be committed to a lump sum fee, so we won't have any ads or detractions. This isn't a building project. There sh we shouldn't be any change orders for this. They're going to provide this for the contract for that. If they can't, if you can't do that within the money you have available, or at least close to it, if it means that much to you, committee, then you go to the second person and down the line until you can come to an agreement. Once you come to that, you will submit that name to the MSBA for their approval, and the MSBA could call them in for an interview as well. But that would be the process going forward to select. Wayne, I just wondered, like you participated in this whole process, so what was your impression? To me, everybody, all the, the uh, contributions from all the different communities were of equal value. Everybody was contributing. It seemed like a pretty healthy give and take. Yeah, the sub subcommittee was uh, involving six in each community because. Jeff and Greg overseeing it is uh, really <coughs> worthwhile. Matter of fact, the six couldn't, we couldn't function without the direction from these two telling us what needs to be done in a step-by-step <coughs> uh, -step, uh, situation. As far as everybody's got equal say, absolutely. Uh, first week's homework, everybody's supposed to develop a re rubric on strength of points. It turns out that one did a real nice one that we ended up using as a template. We just tweaked that, modified it a little. But having that person do that template, uh, which was really educationally valid, it really caused the other five people to be able to have a much greater understanding on what was going on. And as you may guess, uh, Dr. Malkwin made that 
rubric that we used and we uh, tweaked it ever so slightly. And it pretty much, as he said, we went with those exactly 11 from the MSBA because they've been doing it over and over and over. Why you know, nobody came up with, everybody had the opportunity to either take something away or add to it, but everybody was in pretty much full agreement. Lisa, any impressions from the work of the subcommittee? Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it. Um, you know, we had had a homework assignment, and I read it over, but I wasn't really sure what to do with it. Um, but um, another member um, had had kind of had some, you know, had an idea what, what to bring, so he, he brought a small grab. Um, and to me, it looked good, but it still didn't make um, a lot of sense. But then you had brought one where you actually took um, the, the 11 areas that needed to be um, voted on and broke them down into points. And, um, and then we ended up adjusting just two of those, those areas um, <coughs> to, you know, to, to reallocate a couple of points here. I think it was like five points. Yeah. Um, but then it all made sense to me. It, it, to me, it was like it's an evaluation that once it was on paper and I saw it, it all fell into place. Um, because to me, it's it's like an educator evaluation. Right. Exactly. Um, you know where you know you either fall into you know A, B, or C, and these are the points that you get, and at the end you add it up, and, and this is your number, and and you go from you rate everybody accordingly. So, I think it's a fantastic system. I think it's it's easy to understand, and I was very grateful for it. Yeah. Moving on to warrants. Oh, so we're done with the fun stuff now? We are. Uh, <laughs> right. Into the money. <laughs> Into the money. Okay. We have a payroll warrant in the amount of $821,603.71. Payroll for what? The 479 employees. We have a bill warrant in the amount of $501,561.43. We have another bill warrant in the amount of $182.73. And a final one bill warrant in the amount of $451.75. As you can gather, those last two would be to correct check errors that were done in the first one for reimbursement of people. So we <coughs> get that all in there. So if you can review these, and if you're okay with them, vote and sign. Bank of America, that's the district credit card. Each school has its own credit card for emergency purposes. When we close the checkbooks for all the student activities, because there's no reporting mechanism under 1099, Bank of America provides a credit card that the classes can use for class dues and things like that. To, you know, they put the credit card down to rent a hall for the senior prom or things like that. But the, but, the, but the way Bank of America does, it creates a reporting mechanism by vendor, so we're in compliance with the IRS as opposed to just handwriting checks. There's a lot of student activities, field trips and things like that. Well, I was yeah. going to say it's 9000 over $9,000. Yeah, but you remember, that's for every school yeah. for an entire okay. month, and we take in a lot of school dues and things. <laughs> you want to take a look at these mm -hmm. two? Different, different one you're going to look at. I know there's one you're going to say. Uh, I haven't got there yet. You might have.
Consulting. There you go. I knew you'd catch it. O'Neill Consulting, $8,000. Yeah. That was our, I think, oh my God, I lost him. It's on the tip of my tongue, too. The educational thing that they had to do for technology upgrades, we put all the Wi Fi systems in. Okay. That was the $8,000 consultant that ran us through the federal program, and we got about $156,000 back from that. So it was money well spent. What do they call that, Jeff? I forgot what it was. What's that? The money we got from the feds for the putting all the Wi Fi and all the cable. Oh, that's the E rate. E rate. Oh. That's it. Took my tongue. It was the E rate consultant. Powers and Sullivan? Audit. Okay. Well, the down, one of the down payments is still be a final payment when they issue the bound copies. And how long did it take them to do that? Two weeks. <laughs> not bad, two weeks salary. No, two weeks, two kids. Wait, that's not all of this. There'll be another one that they'll do later, another federal report that they'll come in and do like in February. I think over the year, I think it's about 35000 a year in total. And we have to do that? Mm hmm You guys don't want audits? The only time you don't have to do an audit is if you don't owe any money through bonding. Bonding companies like you to be audited and submit those reports every year. If you don't owe any money, and there was a couple of years in Groban, we didn't have any debt at all. I actually considered not doing them <laughs> to save some money, but in the end, it's just better to keep, have a run of audits. Take it off when we might leave it blank when we get a new member off the One of them has to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't scare anybody away. This is their first meeting. I need one from each town. <laughs> yeah, if this looks fun to you, it's really <laughs> Transfers tonight? Two very small ones. Oh, they are. Okay. Just fine. Two principal requests and ten ones. Are behind? No. Oh, okay. Just wondering. Transfers at principal request. One out of the middle school, moving $1,200 from his contracted service line to instructional software. And one out of the high school, moving $525 out of guidance supplies into uh, a salary for building aid high school. He wanted to keep someone a couple extra hours and he wanted to fund it this way. That was, that's our two transfers. our agenda. Anybody have any questions, concerns, comments? Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Order the Teaching, Learning, and Accountability Subcommittee meeting. Um, agenda items about the possible 7 to 12 consolidation. Do you want to talk to that? Or, yeah, I, mean, I can we're a having... little bit. Okay. It, it depends. Whatever you want me to do, I'm happy to fill in. Uh, sure. I mean, we're having our meeting January, right? Our public. Yeah. So um, the the uh, agenda item comes from the uh, MSBA requiring that we demonstrate evidence of the community support for a seven through twelve consolidation 
if that's the direction that this building project moves in. So you, you may, uh, for the new members, the, um, the MSBA project for the high school has two different parameters around it. One is a 9 through 12 con uh, configuration, mm -hmm. and then the other one is a 7 through 12 configuration. And the reason that came up is there's a declining population uh, trend that's underway. And there's also questions about the age of the middle school, the, um, the way that our programming already is connected in, how our high school kids are taking courses over at the uh, middle school. And um, so a bunch of different kinds of things came up when they did the study, when we had to provide information with the study. And so they gave us two options. Take a look at 9 through 12, take a look at 7 through 12. Well, if in the end, the 7 through 12 option is the best solution, they want to make sure that we have community support for that. Because their position is, we're not here to push anything down anybody's throat. And, um, you know, they want to make sure that we're ready for that. So that's kind of the back, back uh, story on, you know, why this agenda item is there. So we introduced it last time at the business meeting, I think. Yeah. And this is another discussion point. And what I can tell you is that I've talked with Jonathan and Ken, our two principals, middle and high school, and they're organizing some students to be able to present their views about an, a possible 7 through 12 consolidation. So what you'd probably hear from them is what their experience is, either as a middle school student coming over here to take some uh, accelerated classes or a high school student going over to the middle school and taking either language arts, I mean, um, world language classes or you know some of the STEM related classes uh, and so their points of view would be represented um, and uh, so I have that to report out they're getting that ready for uh, January it's likely that they'll be able to come the students will be able to come to our next meeting and you'll get a taste of what they'll have to say about that uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of the backstory story and, and where we are so far, far. So I don't know if you have, like, some other discussion now to, you know, air some either concerns or benefits or points of view. That's what this is about. So the students will be coming to the December business meeting? That's the plan, yeah. Now, will they be speaking as well at the public hearing? That was the plan. Okay. Yeah, so at the public hearing, the idea would be to hear from some students about what their views are and also to hear from the community about, you know, different points of view that they might have. So um, I just remember at the meeting about the mascot, we did get some criticism about people feeling like we didn't advertise the public hearing well enough. And yeah. so I just want to think about how we could best reach the people who are not, I guess, in the school. Yeah. Um, so I could put together a little media alert, okay. and I could give the backstory and and what it's going <coughs> to be like in January when we do the public hearing, and and see if that goes, you know, in the newspaper. That would be a big help. Okay. If that, you know, if you think that would be good. Yeah. I mean, I can pump it out through Connect Ed, but right. that only goes as far as our parents and educators, you know. Right. What was the date we were looking at? January seventeenth. Six thirty p.m. like a regular business meeting. That was the idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as I, you know, I said this at the last business meeting, but you know, I have an eighth grader who's taking a CAD class, and that happens to be a high school class, and there hasn't been any issue whatsoever being integrated into that classroom. It's actually been a really good experience, and I was a little bit nervous at first. You know, he's going to be in there with seniors, but no issues at all. I know he really enjoys the class and it's good that he's had the opportunity to take this class because it's shown him that he really likes it and it's giving him some more ideas of what he wants to take when he gets yeah. to high school next year. So yeah. I've been happy with that. Well in a smaller school you can offer things like that to more students mm -hmm. when you can combine the resources you have. Um, mm -hmm. Just a nice opportunity for our, kid, our students. Yeah. Dick has some questions. I think there are some financial uh, pluses. Um, 
I was involved with this, this same kind of uh, committee work when uh, North Reading uh, was considering 7 through 12. And actually, it's 6 through 12. And um, what we found in our research was that the average high school cost around $65 million for a brand new high school. And, and that's just an average. But since the state was promising us 50%, um, our committee put together a proposal and said, what if we do a North Reading senior <coughs> school with shared facilities? And that might have pushed it up to 120, 125. Um, but the bottom line is we got two state-of-the-art schools for the price of one high school. And I think for taxpayers in the three towns, that could be a real plus. The negative part of doing 9 through 12 is you have two buildings that, and I've been around here for 46 years, they're old. Mm -hmm. And um, if we're just going to work on one school and not the other, I would think that we would have, we would really drop to the bottom of the list coming back and saying, oh, by the way, thank you very much for helping us with this school. We now need, two years later, uh, we'd like to be part of the draw. And I don't think they would buy it at all. So I see this as a great opportunity. Uh, and it's, it's worked out with a number of communities. You can talk to uh, uh, the uh, uh, various superintendents at Masco, at Hamilton, Wenham. There's a number of schools that Manchester have done this. Manchester Essex as well. We have a new okay. um, middle high school at Manchester Essex. Relatively. Yeah. So I just put that on the plus side of the equation. So yeah, I think it's a good selling point. Yeah. Any other questions? Discussion? And you won't have to come back for 50 years. <laughs> I can tell you I won't. <laughs> Me? Yeah. <laughs> Walker will be rusty by that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have pretty good health care coverage. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> so does anyone have anything else to discuss? Or? Yeah. So I'll, I'll work with the principals on getting some students to come. Mm -hmm. okay. And we can, um, I'll, I'll push out a, a media alert and uh, try to publicize this as much as I can. Um, I might suggest to have the elementary principals because I think a lot of those students are the ones who would be affected more so than if you already have students at middle and high school. Um, so maybe even having the elementary principals included in their weekly communications or something. Yeah. Also because those parents may be more likely to have concerns. Well, that, yeah, exactly. Yes. Like they don't Absolutely. see how it works. Like you can see how it works right. for your current student. Right. But if you have a kindergartner imagining what they might be, right. <coughs> like they, maybe those parents can't right. see that far ahead quite mm -hmm. yet. Yep. Um, no, I agree. Okay. Is I that all? Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> okay. Do I make a motion to adjourn? You could. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Here we go yeah. for communication. So Andy is uh, ill, he's not here tonight. And uh, so that leaves Brian as the only uh, member. So um, all I wanted to do tonight was go through the thought exchange results that Andy got. Andy did some background checking, and he got all favorable results, really uh, impressive results. I think he shared that out last week with the committee. Yeah, read his comments were pretty good. Yeah. So he asked me if I would contact uh, Thought Exchange and get together a, a little proposal from them and like what they do, the kinds of things. So I have all that together. It's really focused on the uh, building project, of course. Uh, so the, the, the um, it would begin January and go through ne this year and next year for the building project. So they're estimating around $14,000 per year for their uh, infrastructure, the engagement process, the analysis of all the data that comes in and the software licensing fee. So I talked with Greg. We can come up with that this year and budget for it next year. So I don't think that's going to break the bank or be a hardship for us. And um, really the more I find out about it, the more I'm convinced that it would be a really good thing for us to do 
to really engage the community so like we can all know like what what the best solution is but if the community doesn't own it that's going to be a problem so I think this would build some ownership in the community and uh, would be a good way of doing it so Andy uh, was going to go through this uh, tonight and talk about I don't have all the details that he has about the research he did and then at the business meeting he was going to recommend that we move forward with this and I can do that pretty easily and then uh, you know, get going on it. That, that's what I thought. We'd bring it to the full, 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 full committee yeah. for their approval on it. Yeah, so they have documented like the first engagement happening between January and February, the next one in May and June, you know, and so they've got some detail here, but it really depends upon <coughs> what you find out as to what your next steps are. So they can only project so much, uh -huh. you know, with any uh, certainty. And, uh, you know, it, They've been really good to talk to and be, they're very flexible and willing to help and, you know, communicate as much as they can. I said we wouldn't need them tonight. Like, they would have been here like we did Skype with them last time. I said, I don't think you really need to do that because Andy did his homework and everything looks pretty good. So that's all I have to report out, you know, for right now. Yes? So can you budget this out of the money allocated for the feasibility study? No, I think it would be better for us to look to our own internal resources. Okay. So the, the MSBA is going to really scrutinize what we spend on. Okay. And I'd rather not have something in there that then they come back and say, well, we, we can't approve that. So this is one of those <coughs> things that it's not going to cost us a lot of money. I'd rather not push on the MSBA at all okay. you know, as we go forward. Yeah, a, key, a key thing with the MSBA is they've approved the feasibility study number up to the 700000 that the school committee allocated. Now, if you spend more than that, they're not going to reimburse us for it. Okay. So I'd rather not keep anything in that $700,000 that isn't reimbursable because anything within that guideline, they're going to give us back 52% of it. Right. So I don't want to push on anything that might be Yeah, we want to be strategic about that money. Okay. So that's all I have for tonight. Great. Sound okay? Sounds good to me. Everybody all set? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. So too. <laughs> <You'll prove yourself. laughs>